Anime, also known as Japanese animation, is a cultural phenomenon that has swept the world since its inception in 1963. There are many genres of anime, ranging from action adventure to slice of life. But what if they were funny? Even if they weren't meant to be funny? Even if that comedy comes at the cost of departing from the original source material? Meet abridged parodies, also known as abridging, the process of taking some form of animation, typically anime, and creating a parody from it. This is accomplished by a near complete overhaul of the original source material, creating a new script, casting an entirely new ensemble of actors, utilizing new music, integrating new sound effects, and editing the original footage to create something new. This process allows you to go from this... Emmy? Welcome to McDonald's! I need to talk to you. I'm working right now and you know it. What do you think you're doing? To this... How much for the baby? Excuse me? Five bucks. Right here. Right now. This genre of parody started in 2006 with Martin Bilini, aka Little Karibo, wishing to create something for the Yu-Gi-Oh! fandom, which he was a part of. Initially, he wanted to make an anime music video, or AMV, which was a popular medium on YouTube at the time. However, he felt he would not be able to edit something of that nature, and instead made a parody of the first episode of the series, writing the script, editing the video, and voicing all the characters himself. Hey Gramps, can we please see your super rare awesome chocolatey fudge coated mega super card? I don't see why not. The name Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged came from his intent to take the first episode and condense it down only to its core elements in a comedic fashion. The name stuck and the series continued, but with all things popular, there are bound to be imitators. The success of the series brought on several others who wished to imitate Lil Karibo, such as HBI's UK with his Berserk Abridged, Okay, you guys go that way, you guys go that way, and if we win, we all get ice cream! Break! Lanny Bator, with his Yu Yu Hakusho Abridged, And so we meet Yusuke Yurameshi, the hero of this story. But oddly enough, he's dead. Where the hell is that voice coming from? And why am I flying? Man, that's the last time I accept Kool-Aid from my art teacher. And Masako X and Vegeta 3986, with their Naruto abridged. <laughs> Man, I really want to become Okage, believe it! So to show my respect, I'm painting graffiti all over their faces! These early attempts at the genre were often crude, low quality, and shoddily constructed compared to today's standards. It wasn't until Team 4 Star's Dragon Ball Z abridged that assembling a team of abridgers or delegating duties was even heavily considered consisting of Masako X, Vegeta 3986, Takahata 101, Kaiser Neko, and Lanny Pator, the team was able to surpass the popularity of Little Karibo and help to bring abridging to prominence on YouTube. This is precious. You expect to beat me with this automaton of fun? Registering insult. Retort, you are short and your hairline is receding. Ooh, scathing. However, with abridging being a comedic medium and humor being subjective, there were bound to be changes to the format. One of the first changes to abridging was Purple WTF's Code Ment in 2010. This entry was the first in a style of abridging called Abridgement, or Ment, wherein most of, if not the entirety of the source material's plot is rewritten or ignored completely to enhance randomness and humor. Many entries of this style have extreme visual edits and nonsensical humor to maximize entertainment. Hello? Hey, what's up? I need your help. Can you come here? Uh, I can't. I'm buying clothes. All right, well, hurry up and come over here. Well, I can't find them. What do you mean you can't find them? I can't find them. There's only soup. What do you mean there's only soup? It means there's only soup. Well, then get out of this soup aisle! All right, you don't have to shout at me! Today, abridging has grown and changed since the early days of 2006 to 2010. Older creators, such as Little Karibo, have drastically increased the quality of their content, moving from content like this in 2006... Hey, Joey. Airs to Joey. Hey, are you in there? It's your move. Sorry, Yug. Doing this Brooklyn accent makes it difficult to concentrate on card games. To this, released October 2016. It's only a matter of time before the Pharaoh gets here. And when he does, I'll be ready. Ready to unleash justice. Ready for anything he can possibly throw at me. Hey Blondie! Watch me totally make this jump! You know there's a path leading down the other side of the- Yeah, Hossie, yeah! <laughs> Nailed it. Additionally, many teams have formed in order to deal with the increasing standards of quality, such as something witty entertainment. Wow, congrats. You're defeated by a pig. <laughs> you, man, that's like the pig from hell! Really? My God!
I've stumbled across the most powerful weapon in the game! Stop. The Mithril Pebble of Pig Smiting! Please stop. The Schmuck Squad. Hauser. Hey, Princess Veronica. Hey, Tiny. You saw my dick one time! Once? Tiny Bubbles! And the Abridged Boys. Told you that I was a genius. genius. Did you not know what I meant? I just gave Cowdy the pianist. Now she walked with a limp. Common comedic stylings have changed as well, shifting from referential and timely humor to a more character-focused and plot-driven style. Competitions and communities have arisen from abridging as well, with Team Four Star hosting the... Team Four Star Tenkaichi Iron Man Budokai Abridgeathon! Which received over 200 entries and was awarded prizes such as plaques, trophies, and t-shirts. Despite its popularity, abridging is not without challenges to the creators. Abridged parodies are often uploaded on YouTube, which has strict copyright policies. Abridging, while transformative, is often subject to copyright claims either by bots, which search automatically for matches to copyright material, or the rights holders themselves, due to the use of their original footage, whether edited or not. Secondly, abridgers are acutely aware that they cannot make money by selling their parodies while using the original footage of the show they're parodying, as this would be stealing from the creators of the show, and most individuals do not have the resources to create their own unique animations, nor fight a costly court battle. Lastly, abridging takes a good deal of skill to even begin making parodies. Working knowledge of sound design, video editing, voice acting, and script writing are all essential to even begin the process. These aspects together mean that many abridged parodies are done either for internet popularity or for the love of abridging itself, meaning that while anyone can do it, very few choose to. Let's hear from a few abridgers on why they pursue abridging today. I make abridged parodies because it's such a great combination of things I love. Writing, voice acting, video editing, animation, and because we're working with existing footage, not only does it make it possible to make these kinds of animated videos with a tiny team and budget, but I also get to be my own boss. I make a bridge series on the internet because I like voice acting, anime, comedy, and writing, and editing. And apparently run on sentences. It started off as a way to earn attention, and since then it's become a fun experience that can be shared with other talents and a way to entertain folks who might be going through a rough time. In conclusion, abridging is alive and well, despite a few bumps in the road, due to a passion for the medium, a drive to create and improve one's craft, and the possibility of working in these fields professionally. Some teams are able to make a living off abridging through sites like Patreon, an online tip jar where fans can send creators money directly to encourage them to continue creating the products they love. Who knows what incredible things these driven individuals will create in the future? Only time will tell.